Hello, today I will be looking at another drone which I ordered recently. It's Asian EX5 Pro model. I lost EX5 regular model recently and had to buy another one. Anyways, with the regular EX5 model I didn't get the desired results when I filmed the scenery and uh, made some photos. The quality of photos and videos was very bad. It was disappointing. The frame rate of the video was bad. But for this model uh, they added something new which is a three-axis mechanical gimbal uh, which is meant to stabilize the camera and I thought if uh, they add this functionality, probably the video quality should be good. Why would you add a stabilizer for bad camera? So I am continuing my journey looking for a cheap drone with good camera. Now let's open the box and see how it looks like. You can see here there's a bag inside, so the drone is already packed in a bag. Now let me open the box. This is the first time I open it. You see here a really nice bag. Very pretty. Let's just go through the functions here. It says it has GPS positioning, which is important. Follow me function. Let's see if this time the follow me function would work by recognizing the figure of a human. As it was mentioned in the previous model, but actually didn't work. So it has a camera stabilizer, speed control, one key return function, headless mode, attitude mode, HD camera, electric image stabilization, and a GPS. As I mentioned in my previous videos, for a drone, it's important to have GPS so that it stabilizes itself in the air when it's windy, and uh, this. GPS functionality provides control over your drone. There's less possibility that you lose control of the drone in critical situations when it has GPS on. The electric image stabilization is meant to smoothen the video. So if you have this function, I also believe that the video quality should be good. Otherwise, why would you put this function in? One key return function is good if you totally get lost while flying a drone. And if it works well, it should return your drone automatically. In some cases, as it happened to me, this function may fail. And in case of failure, the drone just lands at the moment when you press the button. And it can land in the forest or in the water. So you should be careful about this functionality. Speed control would mean probably three different speed modes. From slowest to the fastest one. And uh, a mechanical PTZ, which in short would be a mechanical stabilizer probably would work in combination with the uh, electric image stabilization. Let's open the bag now. Nice, pretty bag. I should say I paid for this model even less money than I paid for the previous one, the EX5 model, which has less functions. So it depends at what time you buy it and where you buy it. If you're lucky, you can get this model really cheap. So look at this, it looks nice. I see that the remote control is different now. Finally, uh, from e Shin E58 model to EX5 model, they use the same casing for the remote control. Now we see different remote control with less buttons. Probably you would depend on an app installed on your phone. That could be a good idea because I made a lot of mistakes by not connecting my drone to the app trying to fly it around without app and image transmission and it cost me one of the drones one time I just lost the drone because I didn't connect to the app, didn't have image coming from the drone and couldn't return the drone back we have one battery I ordered only one battery because I lost another drone which had two batteries and I had one battery left from the Ishin EX5 drone here is the battery from the previous model and this is the battery from the EX5 Pro model and looking at the characteristics of the battery I can say that they are the same 
the voltage is the same, capacity is the same, discharge rate is the same, and the shapes are the same. So I will be able to use the the battery from the previous model on the X5 Pro model. Now let's look at the drone itself. The drone feels light. As we can see these drones, the more advanced drones have brushless motors so they work silently and they are less prone to mechanical wear and tear. As usually the arms are unfoldable and here we have this gimbal that is supposed to move around when the drone is unstable in the air and thus smoothen the picture coming from the video. This drone has a card for video recording. In my previous videos I said I would prefer a drone without SD card, a drone that would record directly to my phone but I saw that the transmission of video could be interrupted while recording and my last conclusion would be that it's better to record video to an SD card and thus probably it allows you to have better video quality. The downside of this would be that if you lose your drone you would lose all your videos. Now let's remove the protection of the camera, turn on the remote control, turn on the drone and see if the gimbal works. While I'm trying to remove this casing I was thinking of looking at the instructions first and um, here you see there are, there are two booklets and the other thing that I found is usually some spare parts which are propellers, a screwdriver and uh, the cable to charge the battery. Luckily for me there are instructions on how to remove the casing which is a good thing. Usually instructions for these Chinese models are not so good. So it says you need to move it this way. And here it goes. We remove the casing. Before we turn on the drone let's look at the buttons on the remote control. It's different from the previous model, even the less advanced EX5 model of this drone has a different remote control. Here we don't have the buttons at all and we have only turn on and turn off button and calibration button like in the previous models. Here we have a uh, kind of a wheel to control the angle of the video. Here the speed button. Here we have taking photo button and return home button. So the layout is different. Now let's put the battery inside of the drone. Now let's turn it on. Nothing happened to the gimbal. Let's turn on the remote control. Like in the previous models, starting from Ishin E58, the logic is the same. First of all, you need to turn on the drone and then turn on the remote control. But before you can turn on the remote control, you need to put the batteries. And this remote control requires a few of them. This would require four AAA batteries. Now the batteries are in. Let's turn on the remote control. And let's do the factory calibration. Here it goes. The calibration is complete. Now you have to do the compass calibration like in previous models. Uh, but uh, I won't do that. I just want to see how the motors work. I'll just turn it on. 
as usually not much noise as these are brushless motors smooth work very smoothly moving propellers and um, let's see if the gimbal works and yes it works look at this the gimbal is working it's moving it even works when the propellers are not on at this point my review will end here because I will need to test the video quality taken by this camera outside and uh, in my next videos I will show you the results.